Welcome back to the comment section, guys. I'm Brett Cooper. So I have been getting DM after DM, tag after tag. You've been posting it on your stories and tagging me, everything, asking me to talk about what is currently going on in Venezuela after their recent election. And guys, this story is literally wild. I'm so glad you had me look into it. So we need to talk about what I'm seeing from this internet storm and from the international media and why this conversation is so important and relevant to all of us here at home in the US. And also just as a side note, I am so excited to read the comments under this video for my Venezuelan followers because based on what I've already heard from you guys in my DMs and in the comment section, you have thoughts, you have intel. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. So let's get into it. Before we do though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you've not already. And of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss one of our uploads. First, let's just get a little bit of context, a little recap if people aren't up to date on all the Venezuelan elections, because I certainly was not before diving in. On July 28th, a presidential election was held in Venezuela between Emundo Gonzalez and sitting president Nicolas Maduro. And there are videos going around all of social media showing voters allegedly waiting in the streets, being denied access to polling centers and literally waiting through the night to try to get their votes counted. I mean, just watch one of these videos. So this is all of them. They are standing outside voting centers. Venezuelan voters have refused to leave their voting centers until all votes are counted. This is the night of the election. And then here's another video from in the moment as they were allegedly shutting down these polling stations. They're trying to get in. They've shut the doors. Obviously not everybody voted. And this was happening all over the country. And you might be wondering, well, Brett, why is this so serious? Like, why are people so desperate to get their votes counted? I mean, number one, it is your democratic right. But number two, we're gonna get into it. They hate the sitting president and rightfully so. And so then in the middle of the night, while people are still out there waiting, hoping to get their votes counted, hoping to be able to cast their votes, because obviously, as we saw, the doors have been closed, the electoral authorities declared Maduro the winner. And then almost immediately, Gonzalez in turn said that the rules were violated and that it was not correct. And what do you know? It looks like they have serious concerns with the voting machines tallying up all the votes. Wow, sound familiar, Americans? It's almost like we've heard this story before, thought so. Now immediately, Gonzalez called into question how many of the tally sheets the Electoral Council actually had in their possession when they made that call in favor of Maduro. And weirdly, the authorities in Venezuela, this Electoral Council, haven't been able to provide any of the individual tallies as evidence. They're just saying, nope, he won. We know, we can certify it. He has won, we can't show you how he won, but believe us, he did. One article said the vote was riddled with claims of irregularities. The opposition, which is Gonzalez, said that its witnesses were denied access to the National Electoral Council headquarters, that's the CNE, as votes were being counted and alleged that the electoral authority had prevented more votes from being processed. The government has also been accused of rigging votes in the past, which it denied. Of course, because what government would admit that they rigged an election. Obviously not the American government. We know that for sure. For a lot of people, this is the least surprising thing of the entire century in Venezuela. Because in Venezuela, the National Electoral Council is apparently seen to favor the ruling party, AKA Maduro. Well, they're not really seen to favor them. They are basically bought and owned by the ruling party. That same article wrote, Maduro's government controls almost all state institutions, including the CNE, which was accused in 2017 of manipulating turnout figures by a software company that provided the voting technology. The CNE previously denied the assertion, yeah. Seems very honest, very transparent, not at all fishy, at all. Sounds like their checks and balances system is completely in balance. Maybe they need balance of nature to help them out. Because like our government and governments everywhere, I also need something to keep me in check. And that is balance of nature. Balance of nature ensures that I'm getting all the proper nutrients that I might be missing in my normal diet. With balance of nature fruits and veggies, there has never been a more convenient dietary supplement to ensure that you get a wide variety of fruits and vegetables in every single day with 31 different whole fruit and vegetable ingredients. And the way this works is balance of nature takes fruits and vegetables, they freeze dry them, and then they turn them into a powder and put them into a capsule. Then you take your fruit and veggie capsules every single day and your body knows what to do with them. I think you guys know this, but I eat relatively healthily, but also it would be impossible to try to eat 31 different varieties of fruits and vegetables every single day. That is just not attainable for the normal person, especially when you work a lot and you live a very busy life. So that is why I rely on Balance of Nature. So if you wanna keep your health in track and get your health balanced, you need to go to balanceofnature.com and use promo code COOPER for 35% off your first order as a preferred customer. Plus you will get a free bottle of their fiber and spice powder. Again, guys, that is balanceofnature.com, promo code COOPER to redeem that deal. You'll feel great and ready to take on the socialists because that is what needs to happen in Venezuela. So obviously Venezuelans are riled up and the tensions only got worse after Gonzalez's campaign was able to acquire about 73% of the municipal voting tallies that show that Gonzalez was outpacing Maduro by over 3 million votes, which means 
that he allegedly had double the votes of the sitting president. Mr. Gonzalez called the margin mathematically irreversible. This move by the electoral authority to declare victory, but not release detailed voting results, which it had routinely done in past elections, intensified the sense among many Venezuelans and international observers that the election had essentially been stolen. So people once again took to the streets in Venezuela and have been protesting nonstop for days as Maduro's team obviously celebrates and certifies these results that nobody has actually seen. And this was only made worse when Maduro got up on stage for his acceptance speech and decided to not give any promises to his constituents or speak to them, no. Instead, he chose to take that time and mock Argentina's viral and incredibly effective president, Javier Malay. Probably because Malay was one of the very first influential leaders to react to the election results and say this is fishy, I think that this was rigged, it was stolen, and also because Malay represents the exact opposite of everything that Maduro is. But Malay was far from the only person who got involved. Elon Musk came out swinging right after the election results came out and said, major election fraud by Maduro. And then my favorite comment that I saw under his tweet was, if you think this is fraud, wait until I tell you the story about a senile old bastard in America who got 81 million votes in 2020 while hiding in his basement. Exactly. Another person commented and said, everyone expected this. Another person said, you can vote yourself into communism, but you can't vote yourself out. It's exactly what we're seeing in Venezuela. Another person said, Venezuelan elections were always going to be fraudulent. Maduro is a dictator and is not leaving via a fair election. So obviously, again, protests are popping up around the country in a massive, massive way. And the support that is being shown for Gonzalez and his whole campaign is just unprecedented. I mean, look at this crowd. This was him talking to the people Look how many of them are there. Like, it goes all the way down that street. That is literally insane. And that's his party leader basically telling them, like, we're not going to stop fighting. We're going to overturn this. This is not right. We're here to fight for you. That is crazy. Here's another video. I mean, they're taking to the streets en masse, literally everywhere, all different parts of the country. And then, in one very poignant protest that we need to talk about, they knocked down the statue of former Venezuelan dictator Hugo Chavez. And this is not just some little statue. Wild. There he goes crazy. And for people to understand the significance of all of this and to understand who Hugo Chavez is and why he's relevant to what's going on in Venezuela, New York Times just did this article. They covered it well. What happened to Venezuela's democracy? And they wrote, a generation ago, a charismatic former military officer swept into the highest office in Venezuela on a promise to deliver a more inclusive democracy, a system for the common man who would transfer the levers of power from the political elite to the people. That man was Hugo Chavez, who in a democratic vote rode a wave of discontent into the presidential palace in 1999, eventually founding what he called the country's socialist revolution. There you have it. But 25 years later, Mr. Chavez's successor, Nicolas Maduro, oversees an authoritarian regime that jails dissidents, tortures enemies, censors the media, and has just claimed victory in an election that opponents say was blatantly manipulated contrary to the will of the people. Well, apparently, guys, this is obviously news for all of us here in America, but apparently the New York Times does have some journalistic integrity and can spot authoritarian and voter fraud, just not in their own country. Imagine that they can spot it in Venezuela, but not here in in America. You don't say. A man of the people who promised a more inclusive democracy and founded the country's socialist revolution ends up becoming an authoritarian figure and does everything but represent the will of the people? Yeah, America, take notes. It could happen here. It's already happening here. And what's so idiotic about all of this is that we have seen this happen in history time and time again. You know, you could never have a dictator in 2024, even though they call Trump a dictator. It is happening right now in Venezuela. That is why they are so angry. That is why they have been protesting in the streets for days. That is why they stood out in the streets until 3 a.m., until the wee hours of the morning, trying to cast their votes because they hate this regime so much. Now, another thing that I want to point out from this New York Times article is that in one generation this happened, 25 years, in one generation, Venezuela went from being a democracy to a dictatorship. One generation. That is so fast, that is so tangible, that should terrify everyone. Now that New York Times reporter went on and said, Venezuela is now internationally isolated, reeling from a decade-long economic crisis and suffering from a gaping emotional wound, the loss of millions of citizens who have fled abroad. Steve Levitsky, an expert on democracy at Harvard University, called Sunday's vote one of the most egregious electoral frauds in modern Latin American history. And y'all, it's not just the New York Times saying this. It's The Economist. It is AP News. It is MSNBC. It's NBC. Even CNN is calling this fraud. They're calling it like they see it. Now, Gonzalez and his team are continuing to fight. The support for him is just wild. They're still out there protesting. But like you heard, Maduro basically has his hands in every aspect of Venezuelan government, basically in every aspect of the entire country and business, and dethroning him will not be an easy task. They cannot do that, obviously, with votes alone. The whole thing feels revolutionary, and based on what I know and based on what we just read, 
It looks like that's what they need. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of the comment section and maybe even learned something new. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and if you want some hopefully more uplifting content, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. See you guys next time.